بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء ومرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله <coughs> طيب continuing on with Surah Al-Baqarah الحمد لله last week we were discussing uh, the munafiqeen because we are in the ayat of the munafiqeen uh, we said there are certain signs or characteristics of them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentioned in his book and also with the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, so in Allah's book He said, "Fi qulubihim maradun." They have a sickness in their heart, and Allah increased their sickness. Um, also, we mentioned that they have uh, lying as their nature and characteristic. We mentioned the Hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So Allah He says, "Wulum bima kanu yaktibun." They have a severe punishment for what they used to lie or belie. Another narration, another riwayah, "Yukadibun," to belie. Basically, uh, and the Prophet said that if you see one of these characteristics in a person, he has a characteristic from the characteristics of nifaq, of hypocrisy. Um, and that is if he speaks, he lies. And if he uh, makes a promise, he breaks the promise. And if he um, gets in an argument, he gets severely angry. Right? These are some of the characteristics we mentioned. Um, also, if he takes a oath or a covenant or a trust, he betrays the trust. So these are some of the signs of the munafiqeen. And then we also we said in Surah Al-Munafiqeen, Allah says, وَإِذَا رَأَيْتُهُمْ تُعْجِبُكَ أَجْسَامُهُمْ If you see them, they are pleasing to you. Their exterior is pleasing, right? وَإِذَا And when they speak, you listen to their statements. Uh, and then Allah says, كَأَنَّهُمْ خُشْبُ مُسَنَّدَ That they're like a hollow piece of wood. So wood in general is very strong. It looks strong. You know, it's sturdy, you build houses with it. But Allah is calling them the munafiqeen. They look maybe outwardly strong, but inwardly they are nothing. They are very hollow, they are shallow. Like, no support whatsoever. Right? Wood, real wood, supports, you know, structures. But this hollow wood cannot support anything. And that's like the munafiqeen as well. And يَحْسَبُونَ كُلُّ صَيْحَةٍ عَلَيْهِمْ They always think people are talking about them. Like we said, because they talk about other people all the time too, right? Um, that's some of the characteristics Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in his book in the Sunnah of the Prophet we went over and then we started talking about uh, the diseases of the heart because Allah says they have a disease of the heart and we said some of the signs of having a sickness of the heart is laziness and worship you know when a person is lazy to do ibadah that's a sign that there's something wrong with the heart right the munafiqeen you know Allah says qamu ila salati qamu kusara right when they get up for salat they get lazy they're, they're like they do it with a struggle, right? Uh, they don't spend except that they dislike spending. But the mu'min, he's the opposite. Like the Prophet said, he said that, Arihna biha ya Bilal, right? Make it, you know, comfortable for us, O Bilal, meaning the salat. The salat is like the, johar, the, the jewel of a mu'min. You know, he loves the salat, right? And so if we find ourselves being lazy in ibadah, I mentioned last time to be proactive and do the opposite of what the shaitan is encouraging. Right? Oh, you don't need to get up in time for Fajr? Get up and pray Fajr. <laughs> oh, it's, you know, you have a long day of work, don't pray Qiyam al Pray Qiyam al Oh, you know, you need your nutrients. You shouldn't be fasting. Just fast from Allah. Fast extra. Oh, you need to pay that. Well, if you have to pay a bill, that's excusable, inshallah. But if you have extra money, inshallah, give in sadaqah. Tayyip. We also said that when people are not affected by the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Quran, this is a sign of a sickness of the heart, right? When people read the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a believer, we should be moved by it, right? This, the believers, when they read the ayat of Allah, زَادَتْهُمْ imana, Their uh, iman is increased, right? They cry, يَبْكُونَ right? They fall down upon their faces crying, right? These are the way that we react with the Qur'an. Some of the Salaf subhanahu when they heard the, the Qur'an, they literally would like pass out. <laughs> Because the ayat affected them so strongly, you know. The Prophet Sallallahu he used to stand up in the night repeating ayat until his feet were, you know, splitting almost, crying. And he is the forgiven one. And he is the best of humankind. Right? So a mu'min, if he's not moved whatsoever by the book of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, he has to go back and check himself, what's wrong with my heart? Why are these ayat not affecting me? Right? Do I have too many distractions in my life? Am I looking at things I should not be looking? Am I listening to things I should not be listening to? You know, because 
the eyes and the ears and the tongue, these are all vessels into the heart. Right? So if we are looking at corrupt things or listening to corrupt things, that's going to prevent us from benefiting from the beauty of the Qur'an. So a Muslim, he's always keen to be careful what he looks at, what he listens to, what he speaks with, what he eats. You know, all these things affect the heart. We also mentioned the ayat al which is the natural signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if we see a flood, you know, or an earthquake, or wars, or famine, right, or death, like we mentioned death in specific, and a believer is not moved by it, this is something also that indicates a hardness of the heart or a sickness of the heart. <clears throat> and I think we stopped there. We mentioned so much a couple more, inshallah, then we'll get back to the uh, tafsir. Uh, another one is uh, having excessive love of the dunya, right, and following its temptations. Um, dunya comes from the word what? What means what? Anybody know? Lowness, mashallah, lower. Dana, right? Something lowly. <laughs> so if you're chasing after it, you're really just chasing out of something that's fleeting and low and not really desirable at the end of the day. When you see its true colors, you'll wish that you didn't spend time seeking it. Um, but if you see the akhirah, you'll wish you spent more time seeking it. Um, Allah, the Prophet said in, uh, that was narrated upon him, Man asbaha wa dunya akbar لم يكن من الله في شيء وألزم الله قلبه أربع خصال. That if a person wakes up in the morning and the dunya is his greatest um, hema, like wish or desire or like you know a priority, basically, he said that he has nothing from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and Allah will give him four خصال, four characteristics. هم لا ينقطع عن عنه أبدا. Ham is like, uh, you know, like concerns, you know, troubles, worries, concern that never leaves him. وَشُغْرٌ لَا يُفْرَغُ مِنْهُ أَبَدًا And occupation or business or, wor or working, you know, that he never gets free of. وَفَقْرٌ لَا يَبْلَغُ غِنَاءُهُ أَبَدًا And poverty, that richness will never compensate for. So even subhanAllah, he might have like apparently a lot of wealth but he always feels poor. He always feels like he's not benefiting from his wealth. He always wants more. Right? And he'll have like hopes that he will, and wishes he will never reach. Right? This is for the one who has, in the morning he wakes up and his dunya is the biggest concern. And whoever makes his biggest concern the akhirah, the next life, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of your concerns of this dunya and the akhirah, subhanAllah, right? So if you're worried so much about the dunya, Allah like punishes you with it more, right? You never get satisfied basically, right? When Adam, um, Prophet he said that Ibn Adam, even if he had a mountain of gold, he would wish he would have another one, right? He's never satisfied. But a mu'min, his ghina, his richness is in his heart. He's content with his iman and whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him, so he's always happy. That's why you find even the poor mu'min, He's content, subhanAllah. He doesn't complain. But you find the rich, fajr, or evil one, or disbeliever, they're always complaining. Oh, I don't have time in my life. Oh, I, their families are breaking up. They're committing suicide. They're drug abusing. They're alcohol abuse. Why? Because their hem is the dunya. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He described the dunya in many uh, ayat as lahwan wa la'ibun, right? Like a distraction or amusement. Right, nothing that's seriously. Mata'ul uh, ghurur, a brief deception. Right? We like think that we're going to live forever. We're always planning for the future. Um, but Allah calls it, it's like a brief deception. Even if you live 100 years, 1,000 years, what is that compared to forever? Right? Nothing. So we are, if we're not paying attention correctly, we're getting deceived by the dunya. Um, and the ones who you know, chase after it, they won't ever be satisfied and they will have the most regret on the Day of Judgment. Right? Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah ta'ala, he said a statement which we can adapt you know, somewhat, the meaning of it is that keep it in your hand and not in your heart. Right? As long as the dunya is in your hand, you use it for beneficial purposes, you provide for your family, to give sadaqah, to give zakat, right? to make hajj, to increase in knowledge, to help the ummah, that's fine, alhamdulillah. 
but it's not in your heart. You have a million dollars, mashallah, alhamdulillah. You have zero dollars, mashallah, alhamdulillah. Right? That's the difference between the mu'min and the one who has little iman or no iman or has sickness in the heart. Uh, another. Oh, it's nice saying uh, about the dunya. Man, abdin illa walahu aynan, aynan if he wish, wish he yubasiru biha, amur al dunya, wa aynan if fi qalbihi yubasiru biha bihi ma amur al akhira. That a servant, he's given two sets or pair of eyes, basically, two that he is used to see the apparent world, the physical eyes in your eye, you know, right here that we have. We see the apparent world and two eyes in the heart with which we will see the akhirah, right? Meaning that you see the right and the wrong, the good and the bad. Um, you get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with that. And the scholars say that, you know, if you're blind in these eyes and this one sees, alhamdulillah, you're okay. But if you're blind in this one with the heart and the eye sees, then you're in trouble, right? Because that's preventing you from the akhirah. The other one is not respecting the hurumat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the masha'ir of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, so if somebody has, you know, like uh, lack of respect for the deen, for the Qur'an, for the religious ones, for the scholars, for the, you know, ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu this is signs of weakness of iman or sickness of the heart, right? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا مِنْ وَمَا يُعَدِّمْ حُرُمَاتِ اللَّهِ فَهُوَ خَيْرُ لَهُ عِنْدَ رَبِّي And another ayah, ذَلِكَ وَمَا يُعَدِّمْ شَعِرَ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّهَا مِنْ تَقْوَى الْقُلُوبِ So basically, if you respect the um, sacraments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is better for you with Allah. And if you respect or venerate or honor the sacraments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then verily, um, this is the one who has taqwa in their hearts. right? Meaning that if a person doesn't respect the sacraments or uh, give veneration to the sacraments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that means that he lacks taqwa in his heart which means there's a sickness in the heart right um, so people who you know like about the munafiqeen this is another thing they were making fun of the deen right when they says وَآيَاتِهِ وَرَسُولِهِ كُنْتُمْ تَسْتَهْزِئُونَ Right, the, the, the hypocrites, they were like making fun of the Prophet and the companions, right? And Allah, you know, even though uh, they didn't say it outwardly in front of the Prophet and his companions, but Allah heard what they were saying and He revealed to the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, And He says that, you know, the munafiqeen say to them, we were just joking, we were just amusing, we were playing around, right? And Allah says, were you joking or making fun of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His ayat and His uh, messenger? You have become disbelievers after your iman. And we said before that the, 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 the munafiq sometimes he shows outwardly some iman. Or sometimes he might have a light of iman which we'll discuss today in the ayat. But it gets completely negated by his act of nifaq. Right? So making fun of the religion, not respecting the religion, this is a serious sickness of the heart that actually could be a form of disbelief. Right? If somebody truly makes, some, makes fun of something that's part of the deen, that they know to be part of the deen, then they actually could leave Iman. Um, so it's very important to not fall into that category. Um, number six, one of the signs of a sickness of the heart is keeping bad company. You know, if a person uh, sees that they are surrounded by evil people all the time, or people that don't respect the deen, or people that are not like, you know, basically encouraging you in Iman, that's a sign that you could have some type of sickness in the heart as well. Right? Because a mu'min, a believer, does not um, feel comfortable around people who are in disbelief all the time or you know, using foul language or um, calling you to evil or doing evil in front of you or preventing you from doing good. Right? This is bad company. Um, the people that you keep closest to you will have a very uh, high level of influence upon you. you know, from psychological studies to sociological, sociological studies, they say that you are the sum of the five closest people to you, right? Meaning that those people that are closest to you, they have the biggest influence upon you. Right? And if you look at the uh, seerah of the Prophet Wasallam, you know, who did he surround himself with? Right. Abu Bakr, who else? Omar, oh, it's Ali, 
Uthman, Sam, right? So everyone can say the names because they know. <laughs> and look at the seerah of all these people. Abu Bakr, Umar radiallahu anhu, Uthman, Ali. They're like the best of the best. Honorable amongst the tribes of the Arabs, knowledgeable in the more of dunya and the akhirah, right? In the deen and the dunya. Right? These are people we want as good company, right? He didn't bring like some dumb people, like some ignorant people, some, you know, you know, you'll find occasion the Prophet interacted with ignorant people, obviously, but it's not like he kept them close to him all the time. So your close companions, you have to be careful who you take as a close companions. Uh, on the day of judgment, the wrongdoer, he will bite his hand out of like regret and anger. And he said, I wish I would follow the way of the Prophet I wish that I did not take such and such as a friend, as a close friend. Right? And then That even the closest What do they call it? Uh, BB, BBF's best, best friends Or something like that There's, uh, The closest are closest in this dunya The homeboys, the gang members The you know, homies <laughs> You're like you know, Bros, you're whatever you want to call them BFF Yeah, that's what I was trying to say <laughs> Right? They will be enemies from one another on the day of judgment in the akhirah. Right? Except those that have taqwa. Right? If you build your relationship with Allah of Allah and love with the Prophet and love with the deen, that relationship is going to last. Friendships, marriage, etc. Even business. Huh? What was the other word you were trying to Close friends. Oh, Close friends. Like very close friends. They will be enemies to one another on the day of judgment because they lacked iman. They built their friendship upon the dunya and they will actually hate each other and cuss each other out and curse each other on the akhirah. Right? But the mu'min, the believers, because they love for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will be blessed. Um, I'm just giving you a summary of each. Each of these takes like a long time to explain so we don't have much time. But I just want to give you like indication to pay attention to these signs, if they're affecting us or in any way, we want to go back and check ourselves and try to get rid of them so we can have you know, a heart that's open to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and away from any type of hypocrisy or, or disbelief. Um, and you know, if you love and hate for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will bless, bless your relationships. Right? If you pick a friend for the sake of Allah, that's a blessed relationship. That's true brotherhood right there. Right? So the believers are awliya to one another. They're protectors to one another. They're confidants to one another. They are, you know, supporters of one another. Um, the other ones that have friendship over the dunya, it's like maslahji. They just, if they have a benefit, they'll be friends. If they don't have benefit, they leave you, in the, you know, at the, at the turn of a, the button, basically. They just turn their backs to you. So, alhamdulillah, as Muslims, we try to aspire to have friendship based upon Allah. And Allah, he says in Hadith Qudsi, that my love has been made obligatory for the ones who love each other for my sake. So if you want to have this love of Allah, and you love somebody for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you can earn Allah's love with that. Right? So, hibbukum billah, inshaAllah. I hibbukum fillah. I love you all for the sake of Allah. I hope that I can earn Allah's love. Inshaallah. <laughs> uh, another sign is like, Excessive uh, heedlessness, um, excessive depression and loneliness sometimes is a sign that there's something wrong with the heart because the Muslim, the mu'min, you know, he has uh, the concept of the akhirah and that Allah subhanahu wa is in control of the affairs. So those feelings don't overwhelm, don't overtake him. I'm not saying it's not, normal, it's, it's not like uh, haram to be upset or depressed or sad. Obviously, it's permissible. Even the prophets, alayhim salatu wasalam, would go through phases of that. But when it becomes overwhelming and, and, and it's taking over all your emotions, that's something different that could be a sign of, you know, some type of illness in the heart. Um, those that have clinical depression or clinical, you know, anxiety, etc., that's something that's like a sickness, like a physical sickness almost at that point. So it might be a little bit different. Um, but in general, you know, a heedlessness when you're like totally away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. مِنْ عَرَانَ ذِكْرِ فَإِنَّهُمْ عَيْشَةً ضَنْكَ وَنَحْشَرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ عَامَةً Right, those who yes, turn away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will have a miserable life and Allah will resurrect them blind, right? Because they used to be away from Allah's ayat. Why did you resurrect us as like blind and we used to see in this dunya? 
because the ayat used to come to you and you turn your back to it, so today you will be forgotten, right? Meaning in the akhir, they will be thrown into the hellfire. Uh, another sign is like excessive uh, sinfulness when people continuously do sins, right? We all fall into sins, we all make mistakes, but if a sin is like continuous, a person keeps doing it, that means there's some type of sickness in the heart, right? And you should stop yourself, check yourself, make a sincere tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Even if it's minor sins, because minor sins can become, you know, like mountains. When you have pebbles, 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 they build up to form mountains. So we want to be careful from that as well, right? So these are some of the sick signs of a sickness of the heart, signs of hypocrisy. And we want to, inshallah, avoid that so we don't fall into uh, the state of, you know, having a sealed heart or, you know, a, dis a distorted heart or a sick heart. Play. So we last, we should do it. We are the ones who say, "Amen." Now, if they go to the shaytan, they say, "Inna ma'akum, inna ma, inna ma, kun, inna ma, nahnu mustahzi'un." Allah is tahzi'u bihim wa yimudhum bi tuqiyanihim yamahun. The we mentioned this last week that when they meet with the believers, they say, "We believe," and when they go to the shaytan, their leaders or their you know other fellow hypocrites, they say that we are with you. We were just making fun of them. Like we're just making fun, like taking advantage of them, trying to fool them, betray them, right? And then Allah says, Allah is bihim wa fi yamahun. That Allah, He is the one who will deceive them or um, you know, make fun of them basically and put them in their transgression uh, so they won't know any better. Like they will basically uh, be in a state of balal and loss. And that's in the akhir, like we mentioned, they will be uh, punished for all that they did. And this is a sign of the hypocrites too, that they say something with one people and they go and say another thing with another people. Right? Because they don't have solid iman. They are the ones who purchased misguidance with guidance and their you know, business transaction was not successful and they are not from the ones who are guided. So what an evil purchase they have here. Imagine you're buying something. Like when you say, Allah said, اشتروا, they bought. What do you buy usually when you buy something? But why? To consume? Okay. But usually it's for... Why would you purchase something? Anything, yeah. Why? Huh? Yeah. Yeah, the need or I want, the benefit, basically, right? So imagine you're purchasing something of with value, using like your hard-earned cash, your credit, your gold, right? To buy something that is not only worthless, but it's going to harm you, right? Like even, you know, druggies, <laughs> they get some type of benefit, at least, you know, from the getting high, I guess you can say, but then they're going to get harmed worse anyways. But these people... Astaghfirullah. There's not saying drugs are halal. They're definitely halal. <laughs> Some cereal to eat. We need to eat. Yes. Yeah, but even in the in that, there's some benefit in it. So usually, with the uqla, there's when they buy something, there's going to be something beneficial towards them, right? But the munafiqeen, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, saying that they are buying misguidance, balala bil huda. Right? Something that not only is going to be not beneficial for them, but it's going to harm them in the akhirah. Right? With huda, which is priceless, guidance. They're giving up their guidance for misguidance. So Allah says, The business transaction did not be successful. They failed. Right? And if you look, uh, basically, if you're not using your, your, your gifts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and khayr, you are in a state of loss. Like the Surah Al-Asr, which is famous. Everybody's in a state of loss. Right? Um, you know the Surah Al-Asr, I don't have to translate for you, inshallah, everybody knows that. Right? But basically you're in a state of loss, except if you have Iman and A'mal and Sabr and uh, you know, encouraging the good, basically. Patience and encouraging the good. Uh, the truth. Uh, the other ayat, Allah says, 
هل أدلكم على تجارة تنجيكم من عذاب أليم تؤمنون بالله ورسوله right should I tell you of a business transaction that will save you from the hellfire to believe in Allah and his messenger and strive in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right إن الله شرى من المؤمنين أنفسهم مالهم بأنهم من الجنة that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has purchased from the believers from their souls and their wealth so that they will have jannah right so anytime you want to have a prosperous tijara then you should fulfill the duties that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed for us if you want to be in a state of loss you want to have a losing transaction then you follow the misguidance so استبدل الكفر بالإيمان that Allah the Imam is saying that they changed or traded uh, kufr with iman so they took their iman away for kufr فَمَا رَبِحَ تِجَارَةٌ أَيْ مَا رَبِحُ فِي تِجَارَةٍ They did not win in their business. وَمَا كَانُوا مُهْتَدِينَ And they were not guided from their uh, disbelief. من الضلالة وقيل مصيبي ومصيبين في تجارتهم They were not um, rightly guided in their business transaction. So two tafsirs, two explanations is that one, they were misguided basically in their iman in general, they were misguided and also meaning describing their business transaction. It was not only a state of loss, it was a misguided transaction. Right? They tried to trade something of value for nothing, for something that's worth you know, nothing or actually it's going to be negative and right? hurt you and harm you. Yes? Not only taking harmful goods, it's exchanging goods. Exactly. <laughs> Double, double loss, yes. Salaam, what's going on? Alaikum, salaam, what's going on? Like taking your hard earned money and you think you're buying this land that's going to be able to build on it, it's filled with a swamp land full of people eating crocodiles. Yeah, that's like a dunya example, like say you made a transaction, because also they're doing it based without knowledge. So say somebody wants to go and buy a piece of land to build their house upon it and they went and bought the land and found out that it's a swamp land they can't build anything on it <laughs> not only that there's crocodiles there <laughs> so there's no benefit whatsoever right and that's just from the dunya but this is with the akhirah their tijara affected their akhirah meaning that they will be in the hellfire forever right that's why subhanAllah if you look at the amthal in the Quran that even if they had the whole earth full of gold they would exchange it so they can get out of the hellfire right and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he asks for a lot less than that so they have the, you know, the worst business transaction. Uh, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He goes and describes them in two um, metaphors. The first metaphor is with uh, fire, and the second metaphor is with water, subhanAllah. And if you look at the balagha of the Qur'an, it's just beautiful how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like, paints a picture for us. مَثَلُهُمْ كَمَثَلِ الَّذِي اسْتَوْقَدَ النَّارًا فَلَمَّا أَضَاءَتْ مَا حَوْلَهُ ذَهَبَ اللَّهُ بِنُورِهِمْ وَتَرَكُمْ فِي ظُلُمَاتِ اللَّا يُبُصِّرُونَ That... They are like the one who asked for a light, like to have a fire started for him, right? Because it's complete darkness. So the light was lit for them. And when it was lit and shined around them, like they were in complete darkness, then they see some light. Allah took away the light. And he left them in the darkness and they are unable to see. They are deaf, mute, and blind. They will never be able to come back. <clears throat> so this light is basically shining for others. Uh, you know, for making that person be able to see. ذهب الله بنور يمتلكه في ظلمات الله وسمي قال ابن عباس وقتاد ومقاتل والضحاك والسدي نزلت في المنافقين. All these ayats are for the hypocrites. Um, basically, when you can imagine the darkness is that if you're in excessive darkness and you see a light, right, you're able to see temporarily. So the munafiq he had, they had some type of iman but they left it for kufr and disbelief, right? So that beneficial light was apparent for them, the truth was apparent for them, but then they rejected it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took away the light. What happens if you are in a, like you have like a bright light, and then you go into complete darkness? So you lost, you see, 
it's, it becomes more darker, right? Your eyes are like you can't see anything. It's a complete like darkness. It's worse than if you didn't have any light to begin with. Because if you don't have any light to begin with, your eyes can adjust somewhat. But if you see like a light and then all of a sudden the light is taken away, that's worse. It's completely black out. So they had some type of benefit with the Iman for a second, and they rejected it. They turned away from it. So the darkness became even worse. Right? They became like in true darkness. <clears throat> So, يَقُولُ مَثَلُهُمْ فِي نِفَاقِهِمْ كَمَثِي رَجْلٍ أَوْقَدَ نَارًا فِي اللَّيْلَ مُظْلِمَ فِي مَفَازٍ فَاسْتَفْتَفَ وَرَاءَ مَا حَوْلُهُ فَاتَّقَى بِمِمَّا يَخَافِ بَيْنَمَا هُوَ كَذَلِكَ إِذَا طُفِيَةَ النَّارِ فَبَقِيَ فِي ظُلْمَةٍ خَائِفًا مُتَحَيِّرًا So basically, it says that the person of the hypocrites, you know, they had the light for them. Uh, and the fire also gives you something else. What is it? So he asked to have a beneficial light. You have light and what else? Warmth, right? It gives you some type of little bit of comfort. Especially if you're cooking, mashallah. <laughs> yeah, if, he, if, he had the, if they had the time <laughs> to cook, mashallah, yes. <laughs> Sahih. <clears throat> so he's saying that, you know, you had that light, temporary comfort, and then all of a sudden, you know, it's, it also it gives you some type of like safety. Because when you're in darkness, you're walking in darkness, can be darkness, a person automatically gets kind of scared sometimes, right? Because they don't know what's going on. So when a light comes up, oh, mashallah, I can see what's going on, I can see around me, I feel a bit safer. So the light, the safety, the warmth, all that, for just a moment, and then it was taken away. So it becomes even more scary, it becomes even more cold, it becomes even more dark for that person. And that's the munafiq, you know, because he turned his back to the iman and to the truth, so the darkness became even more for him. And then also, وَقِيلَ ذَهَابَ نُورِهِمْ فِي الْقَبْرِ And this is meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take away their light in the grave. Right? You know, in the grave, if you have iman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send your good deeds to be a company for you and comfort for you. And the, and the grave will open up and become so beautiful that you will see your place in Jannah and hope for Qiyamah so that you will go closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But for those who have died upon, you know, disbelief or hypocrisy, their, their, their grave becomes constricted and it becomes darkness. And then their deeds come to them in the most scariest you know, fashion where they get, you know, no comfort whatsoever and they will see their place in the hellfire and, and make dua that they will, Qiyamah doesn't come so they don't have to go to the hellfire, right? ذِهَابَ نُورِهِمْ بِإِظْهَارِ عَقِيدَتِهِمْ عَلَى لِسَانِ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ فَضَرَبَ النَّارُ مَثَلًا ثُمَّ لَمْ يَقُلْ أَطْفَاءَ اللَّهُ نَارَهُمْ لَكِنْ عَبَّرَ بِذِهَابِ نُورِهِ عَنْهُ so it's not like Allah, He said that Allah took away their light, but it said that their light was taken away. Um, SubhanAllah, it's just a fine Arabic thing that Allah says He took away the light, but the heat is still there. So in the other sense, besides comfort, when you have excessive heat, what is that? The opposite of comfort, right? It's an extra form of torture for them. So not only like, this is in the Akhirah, that they will have darkness, but they will have excessive heat, which is a punishment for them. Summun, a hum summun an al la yaqbalunha. They are um, deaf to hearing the truth, they don't accept it. Bukmun, they are not able to speak the truth, right? They don't speak the truth at all, they always lie, they always misbehave, they always deceive, you know, causing problems with people. خلص عن الحق لا يقولونه أو أنهم لما أبطأنوا خلافة ما أظهروا فكأنهم لا ينتقوا بالحق. Basically they are showing other than what they have inside of them, right? So they don't ever express the true uh, nature of truthfulness. أميون أي لا بصائر لهم. They have no uh, vision. The one that doesn't have basira, which means being able to see the good, the right from the wrong, the truth from the falsehood, you know, um, justice from injustice, their, their sense of perception is gone. And that's just like a blind person, worse than a blind person. Like we said before earlier in the, in the introduction, or the, uh, the signs, you know, of sickness of the heart, we have two pairs of eyes, the eyes, the physical eyes and the eyes in the heart. So if the eyes 
The physical eyes are blind, but the eye of the heart see, that person is okay. But if physical eyes are working, and the heart eyes are sealed, that's not okay. That's very dangerous. لا يرجعون عن ضلالتهم أو لا يرجعون إلى الحق. They will never get come back from their misguidance, or they will never come back to the truth, right? So that's the first method that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has mentioned, using the example of fire, and then one after that, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala uses the example of water, right? Sayyib, the rain. أو كصيب من السماء في ظلمات ورعد وبرق يجعلون أصابعهم في آذانهم من السوائق حذر الموت والله محيط بالكافرين. That um, or so Allah mentions an example, a beautiful example of how the munafiq, you know, he asked to have a fire lit for him in the darkness. He did not benefit from it. It became completely dark. He was gone astray. You know, the punishment got worse and worse. Now Allah is mentioning an example of. Like rain coming down from the sky, there's darkness and lightning, uh, uh, thunder and lightning. They put their fingers in their ears. Um, basically, like they're scared to death of the loud noises that's around them in the storm. And they put the, their fingers in the ears to try to prevent that, right? Wallahu muhitum bil kafinin and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ever encompassing of the disbelievers, of everything. Um, before I forget, these ayats also show that qiyas is permissible in Islam. Um, because there are certain madahab or certain groups that say that you cannot do qiyas. Like it has to be strictly, you know, a clear <laughs> ayah or hadith for a subject or else you can't make a ruling upon it. And this is clearly contradicts the manhaj of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qur'an because he uses many amthal, right, examples or metaphors in which there's qiyas. He's comparing one thing to another. So it, some scholars say that these ayats are showing us its permissibility of qiyas. So here, Ashab uh, al-Sayyib, this is the rain from the sky. Dhulamat, Allah says, like a pearl of dhul, darkness, like multiple darknesses. What is that? What do you think that is encompassing? Wrongdoing and physically on this ayah, what? Yeah. Okay. What about, so what's one thing that Allah is mentioning in here? Rain, right? So rain is blocking the vision that's leading to some more darkness. The dark clouds. You know, if it's during the day, blocking the vision, making it darker. If it's at night, it's even more darker. And then, of course, the darkness of the wrongdoings, right? So multiple darkness. Allah says dhulumat, not just dhulm, but dhulumat, yes. Or to thir third power. <laughs> so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is using now the example of water to show the misguidance of the munafiqeen. So the first one, uh, she, uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala daraba mathalan lil munafiqina fi ma'na akhar in shit to mathalahum bil mustawqid so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala defines the munafiq as the one asking for a light basically to start a fire in the first part of the metaphor in this second part in this second ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning the people uh, the example of the rain fi ma'na yuridu kasayib fi khawli ta'ala aw yaziduna bi ma'na he's getting into the, the grammatical per, uh, point here but the wow basically means that or so wow in Arabic language means usually and like you say you know Muhammad wa Omar dahaba ila suq Muhammad and Omar went but also it could mean or in this context like the first example is one or it could be this example as well Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying huh which, which oh this I'm sorry we're verse 19 so we discussed 18 now we're 19 من السماء من السحاب قيل هي السماء بعينها والسماء كل ما على فأظلك. That basically it comes from the sky and the sky is everything above us that covers us. نعم. ما شاء الله. Yes, that's true. So. بلغة إن القرآن. Yeah. So that's why I was, yeah, when you, the more you, we learn 
the Arabic, the Arabic language, the more we appreciate the Quran. You know, subhanAllah. Like, just in this one example, like when I was going through the tafsir, I, I go try to go through a different tafsir just to, you know, try to prepare a little bit. But that little, like, indication, I didn't pick it up. And you know, I've been reading this surah, subhanAllah, so long that the first example was like from fire and the second example was from water to show the characteristics of the munafiqeen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used like two completely opposite things to describe these people and that shows how the munafiq is like so complicated and like different and like two-faced, you know. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like, is just like beautiful little thing. But well, like he was saying, has multiple meanings. You know, it could be and, or, with, etc, etc. There's a whole book about wow actually. There's another book about ma. <laughs> Kitabun ma is a book. The word, the letter, Mim uh, Arif has so many different meanings, subhanAllah. Mushtaqat. Al Kalimat. So, uh, Abu Ahmad, mashallah, Jazawallah khair, also, he also highly encourages us always, all the time, to speak the Arabic language and teach our kids the Arabic language and, like, with each other to learn the Arabic language because it is the language of the Quran. But he mentioned how, um, I'm going to quote him, I have to go back and research, but he says 12 million. Uh, letter length, inshallah. <laughs> I know it's one of the most, um, you know, subhanAllah, like, uh, you know, largest vocabulary basically of the languages. So he's saying 12 million. Uh, the next largest he's saying is English, which has about 600,000. So look at that comparison, subhanAllah. And Allah, He chose it for a reason, you know, subhanAllah, just, uh, it's a miracle in and of itself, um, the language, when you go and like read it and research it, and, and subhanAllah. So, Dhulumat, uh, like we said, was the plural of Dhulma. Um, this is the thunder. Um, the Barq is the lightning. So basically, all of these factors they lead to like scared, you know, a fearfulness. When you have darkness, dark rain, dark clouds, encompassing you you know it's uncomfortable you have like even if, you know for a normal person if you're walking and you see like a loud thunder or you don't see it you see the lightning after the sound comes through but that loud thunder makes you shake right and some tafsir it says that he is that's the uh, basically glorification of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for some of the angels right there's an angel of lightning an angel of uh, thunder etc responsible from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, but these things they are scaring the munafiq, right? He has extra, you know, fear. And he puts his hands in his ears, right, to protect himself from death. Will that protect you from death? Like if lightning's gonna strike you, you think that's gonna, when you put your hands in your ears, is that gonna protect you? No, <laughs> right? Just like the munafiq, they think they're gonna get away with it. They're not. It's gonna come for them, it's gonna, you know, reach them. يَجْعَلُنَا صَابِعَهُمْ فِي أَذَانِهِمْ مِنَ السَّوَاقِ سَوَاق is the plural of سائقة lightning, multiple lightnings basically وَهِيَ سَيْحَةُ الَّتِي يَمُوتُ مِنْ سَمِعِهَا مِنْ يَسْمَعُهَا أَوْ يَغْشَ عَلَيْهِ وَيُقَالْ لِكُلِّ عَذَابٍ مُهْلِكًا سائقة Another meaning of سائقة is that it can be like a very loud sound that will cause a person to uh, pass out Right, so it has multiple meanings, and it says another narration: a sayqa qita'atun min adab. That it's a piece of the punishment. Yanzil Allah, Yanzil Allah Taala ala mayyisha. That He will send it to who He wills. Huri an Salim bin Abdullah bin Umar radiyallahu anhu an Abihi an Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم كان إذا سمع صوت الرعد والصواعق قال اللهم لا تقتلنا بغضبك ولا تهلكنا بعذابك وعافينا قبل ذلك. When the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم would hear the loud thunder or see the lightning, he would make a dua to Allah سبحانه وتعالى. Oh Allah, do not kill us with your anger, right? Do not destroy us with your anger, or do not destroy us with your punishment. And give us relief um, before that occurs, before the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala occurs. Uh, the other thing I mentioned, so we're about to finish the ayat uh, with the munafiqeen. I'll try to, I was hoping to finish tonight, but I'm not able to. We'll go back and finish it. But the believer is the opposite of the hypocrites in the sense that we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from our shortcomings, 
right? When we get scared, we turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, when Allah says that, you know, he takes, he compares them as like deaf, mute, and unable to um, see, right? Summun, ummiyun, bukmun. Basically, they're, they can't hear, they can't see, they, meaning that they can't hear the truth, they can't see the truth, they can't speak the truth. The Muslim, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us afiyah, like the Prophet teaches us, fi uh, basarina wa sam'ina, right? That we ask Allah to give us healing and protection and um, using our gifts from Him in the right way, right? Our eyesight to see what is beneficial, our hearing to hear what is beneficial, our speech to speak that was beneficial, and to stay away from those things that misguide us. Um, so we'll stop here, inshaAllah, ayah number <coughs> 19. And we have one more ayah about the munafiqeen, uh, ayah number 20, inshaAllah, we'll finish with it. If there's any comments or questions, tafadlu, before we end. None? Alhamdulillah. Okay. So what are the signs of the hypocrites? I'll ask you guys a question. What is hollow piece of wood? Yes. If he speaks, he lies. What is it? Either wa'ada. If he makes a promise, he breaks it. And if he has a um, a trust, he breaks it. And then if he gets in a fight or an argument, he blows up. Right? These are some of the descriptions of the manafiq. And Allah says, fi qulubihim maradun. They have a sickness in their heart. We mentioned some of the sicknesses of the heart and how to stay away from them, inshaAllah. Um, also, they might outwardly appear, you know, nice looking. They might speak eloquently, but inside Allah calls them like a hollow piece of wood, right? Like real wood, it's sturdy, it's strong, it holds up the houses, it holds up structures and buildings, etc. But hollow wood, it will break at the least. It's, it's not going to hold up anything. And that's like the munafiq. So Allah subhanahu he describes them very well in his book for us to know about. Um, one thing also, we cannot uh, basically know 100% sure if somebody is munafiq or not. We leave that to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? The Prophet said, qalbi. Did you open his heart? Do you know what's in his heart? Right? Also, even the Prophet him, who was given wahi, he knows you know, what is the right and the wrong. He even said that, you know, be wary if you come to me for a dispute and I judge in the favor of one of you and I am wrong, for verily you are just taking it a piece of the hellfire. It's meaning that he, he does not know except if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him directly. So that helps us because we don't want to be assuming the wrong thing about people. But, you know, a Muslim is not uh, dumb and stupid. So if he sees certain signs all the time repeated, then he can just be careful. But to label someone directly who claims to be a Muslim as a kafir or a hypocrite is something very dangerous. So we have to be careful. I just want to mention that because I didn't mention it last time. Yes. So when you get upset and you blow up basically, these are from the signs of the munafiqeen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from them and protect us from having any type of nifaq or kufr or weakness of iman and to increase us on iman and following the right guidance. Subhanakallah bihamdika ashadu la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.